So welcome, I'm going to show you how to make draggable and slideable doors with the use of Roblox's drag detectors. And I will also be showing how to limit their movement and yeah. So anyway, let's get to it. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with making the basic draggable door now. So we are going to need a hinge that the door part is going to rotate around and a part that we're going to grab. So we name this part hinge and I'm going to set its size to 0 0.4, 0 0.4 by 0 0.4. So I'm gonna duplicate it, move it out, and just place it like so. so. This is going to be the hinge, and this is going to be the main door part. I'm gonna move this guy out. So it's set like this, and now we will need to add attachments. So this hinge is going to have one attachment right here. It's going to be named hinge attachment. And there will also have to be one attachment inside of the main door part. So I'm gonna name this one door attachment, right? And now we need to connect these two attachments with a hinge constraint. It's basically the same as you would make a normal door that's affected by physics, but it's also draggable. So we set attachment 0 to be door attachment and attachment 1 to be hinge attachment. And I'm also going to go and click on constraint details. Right, you see as this door attachment is basically in the center, we don't want that. We want to move it to the hinge right here. Preferably by the center or whenever you want the actual model hinges to be, depending on the door. But yeah, as you can see, it's also rotating on the Z plane. We don't want that. So we need to rotate the attachment like this. And we also want to move the orange arrow to the direction in which the door is going to open, right? As, as you can see, there is this red line right here on the attachment that's giving us a warning. So we need to rotate this first hinge attachment to basically point to the door like this, right? And there is also another warning that the attachments aren't at the same location. So I need to move the hinge attachment right there, right? And now that we have the hinge attachment, we have to duplicate it because we're gonna need another attachment to be relative for the door dragger. And I'm gonna name this one dragger attachment. And from what I've seen, it basically, you have to switch these two arrows around. So we go with the X axis to point to the door basically. like this, and the Y axis has to point upwards, because that's the axis that we want the door to rotate on. So it should look like something like this. Now we need to add a drag detector into the main part. You can change the activation distance to be 10, and this reference instance, that is what I was talking about. We need to set the reference instance to be this dragger attachment right here. And we need to change the drag style in the drag detector to be rotate axis. And this response style has to be physical. And there is also one thing to note, we need to anchor the hinge part, right? And we need to remember that main part needs to be not anchored, because if it's anchored, it's going to change the drag detector response style to be geometric. And also scale the main part a little bit, so it doesn't touch the ground because it can get just stuck sometimes. But going back, there is the drag direction. We want to leave it on the Y axis. So it's 0, 1 and 0. And then we scroll down into this physics response. We can change the max force to be like 600 and max force to be like 600 also. But we want to do responsiveness to be anywhere between 80 to 200. You can add more or less, but it's going to just give a different effect. So I'm going to set it at 100. And let's also not forget to disable collision on the hinge part. But yeah, if I test it all right now, you can see that it is moving and rotating. I can drag it around, right? And it's rotating from the center of the attachment. But you saw that it was constantly rotating around, right? I'm going to show you how to limit it. And we do so in the hinge constraint by scrolling down and changing the actuator type to motor and enabling limits. Whenever we enable the limits, you can see that there is this green line right here with two watts basically just showing us the angle and also another warning that we need to change the rotation. But instead of that, we can just change the angle to be minus 180 by zero. So we'll have the attachment showing us this line right here. So if I try to open the door, you can see that we are getting the limit and we can rotate it around like it was rotating previously. If you want the door to open in only one direction, we can just set it to minus 90 by zero. And it should be opening outwards, not inwards. Wait, yeah, it's showing outwards. So I'm gonna just try minus 90 by minus 180. And yeah, that works. I don't know why it was reversed, but yeah. If I set the hinge constraint here, you can see that it's supposed to rotate here inwards. But yeah, at least it's working. 
And as usual, if you are finding this tutorial informative, then please leave a like. It would really support my channel, but yeah, anyway, back to the video. And now to basically just attach the door to all of this. I'm gonna hide the constraints now, and I'm going to grab this door model that I have right here. And I'm just gonna place it like so. And I'm going to make the hinge transparent. So the door right here basically has the hinges in this place. And we want the cylinder to be roughly in the center. Okay, I'm gonna show the constraint and... Just move it like so. Yeah, it's good enough. And I'm going to disable collisions on all of these because we don't want the main door part to collide with the frame or anything else. And I'm going to unanchor the door and the fence. And now I'm going to select the main door part, then the door and the fence, and then just weld them. Now I use a welding plugin, which allows me to just weld everything to the main door part. And the plugin I use is simply weld by Aussie Pig right here. But anyway, I'm going to make the main door part transparent now. And I'm going to hit play. And if I drag the door, you can see that it's opening. So yeah, if you have a model like this, you want to place the attachment whenever you want the hinge to be, and it's best if you either move the door model itself, like I did, or move every single attachment to be in one position. But yeah, keep in mind that every single one of these attachments needs to be on one spot, in one place. All of them have their word C-frame position, so you can always just copy it and paste it in other attachments. But yeah, moving on to the slidable door now. So again, new part. And we basically repeat the process like add a hinge part, but this one is going to be on top instead. And this one will be the slidable door. So I can duplicate the hinge and I'm going to show two methods for making this. One is going to be for the physical rack style and another one for the geometrical one. So I'm gonna start with the geometrical because it's simpler. So we have this hinge right here, right? We want to add an attachment to it and that's basically it. Now for the main door part, we want to add a drag detector and we want these two parts to be anchored like so. Set the distance to 10 in the drag detector and again change the reference instance to the attachment and change it to geometry. The axis in this case, and you need to keep in mind that this axis, the drag axis, is the it's the local axis of the part and not the word C frame. But if you just place it like this and make sure that it has no orientation, it should be the same as the word from, you know, this box right there. You can see that this is the X axis, the red one. So you need to change it to 1, 0 and 0. Basically 1 on the X value. And now what we want to do is scroll down to the drag limit into the max drag translation and change the X to whichever value on the axis you want it to go to. If I move it to the left, you can see that the x value on the position is increasing. So I want to set the x value to be, let's say, 3. And it's going to move left. If you wanted it to move right, you can set it to minus 3. And that should be everything for it. So if I drag the door, okay, it shouldn't... I forgot to also change the drag style to be translate lane instead of the translate plane. So now if you drag it, it's just going to move like so. And we didn't need to add any limit for it to go to the other side because because it's relevant to the attachment. And where the attachment is, the attachment is going to be the limit for the central point of this part. If I go to the hinge right here, you can see that the attachment is right there. But if I go to server and move it right here, I can also drag the door to the right. So yeah, and that's the geometrical one, right? It can also be touching the ground because it's not affected by physics, but I am also going to show you how to do it on a physical one. So I'm going to do slidable door number two. So again, we want to add a constraint to it. And I'm going to change this attachment to be constraint attachment and I'm going to duplicate it and add a drag attachment. And now I'm going to duplicate the drag attachment, rename it to slider attachment and put it inside of the main door part. And again, this slider attachment needs to be on the same position as this attachment. So you can copy this one's word C frame and just paste it in here. And now we need to add a constraint. And for me, the best one would be the cylindrical constraint. So we set the attachment 0 to be slider and the attachment 1 to be const. And as you can see, we have this thing again. We don't really need that. So we enable the angular limits and we want to go to the angular limits right here and just set everything to 0. Then scroll back down and change the actuator type to motor and you can just set it to like 5 and 5 and you also want to enable the limits and whenever we enable the limits you can see that we have this green line right here right we want the door to go in this direction but the blue arrow is pointing to the other one so now we need to set the slider attachment and just rotate it around like so and then go back to the cylindrical constraint and change the upper limit to be on minus 
like that. And minus 5 is a bit too much, so I'm gonna change it to minus 3. And just to show how this attachment looks like, these are all of its settings basically. But yeah, now we select the drag detector, right, we can add some limits, change the responsiveness again, then set the response style to be physical, and remember to unanchor the main door part, and also move it a bit off the ground. And then I also see that the slider attachment moved a bit, so again just copy a position from another attachment and just paste it in. So now if I try to move it, it's going to open and close like so. And you can see the difference, this is the geometrical one, and this is the physical one. Oh, and I will also be leaving a place with all of these doors in the description, so even if you didn't manage to follow the tutorial right, you will still have access to them. So you can see how they are made and what you did wrong and yeah, just learn from experience. Also, this door opens way better on a first person camera like this, because I noticed that this one is just kind of clunky sometimes, as you can see. But yeah, that's going to be everything for this tutorial then, and yeah, if you found it informative then please subscribe, and that's going to be everything for today, so see ya guys.